On August 13, 1934, a scion of one of Europe's foremost royal families died prematurely in Krumpendorp in Austria. Infante Gonzalo was the son of the deposed King of Spain, Alfonso XIII, who had been ousted from his rule of the Iberian nation three years earlier. Gonzalo was just 19 years of age at the time of his death. Two days earlier, he and his sister Beatrice had been driving near Klagenfurt in Austria when their car had to swerve to avoid a cyclist. They crashed into a wall, but the impact was minor, and neither Gonzalo nor Beatrice was badly hurt. At least, it seemed that way. But within hours, Gonzalo was severely ill, suffering from abdominal bleeding. Furthermore, it was realized that Gonzalo could not be operated as he had a weak heart and suffered from hemophilia. As a consequence, he died two days later from an injury which would have barely troubled most people. Tragically, an almost identical calamity struck the family again just over four years later. In early September 1938, Gonzalo's older brother, Alfonso, the heir apparent to the Spanish throne, was also involved in a car crash in Miami, Florida. In a mirror copy of Gonzalo's death, Alfonso did not appear to suffer serious injuries. But just days later, he too died from internal bleeding. Gonzalo and Alfonso's deaths were just the latest in a series of premature deaths which had struck Europe's royal houses in the late 19th and early 20th century on account of many members of those dynastic lines suffering from hemophilia. But how was it that so many European royals were the victims of this one disease? The answer lies in the tangled marital politics of the 19th century and can be traced back to the sovereign whose name is most associated with the era, Queen Victoria. Before looking at Queen Victoria, let's ask what exactly is the disease which struck down Prince Alfonso and the Infante Gonzalo in the 1930s. Hemophilia is a condition which prevents an individual's blood from clotting properly. It is inherited genetically and often passes from one generation to the next within a family. It is caused by a change or mutation in the genes which people have that instruct the body to begin producing clotting factor proteins when the person is injured. These clotting factor proteins are responsible for making blood clot at the side of a wound so that a person stops bleeding within minutes or an hour or two of sustaining a relatively minor wound. For instance, if a tooth is extracted, the socket will bleed for a while, perhaps as much as a few hours. But eventually, these proteins cause the blood to clot in the socket and then the healing process slowly begins. But with people who have hemophilia, the mutation in the genes that produce this clotting factor protein means that their blood does not clot properly. Consequently, when a hemophiliac sustains a relatively minor injury, it can lead to severe bleeding and loss of blood and failure of the body to heal properly. As a result, people with hemophilia are extremely vulnerable. Things which would be considered minor injuries in most people can be hazardous or even fatal owing to the extensive bleeding they cause, and surgery of any kind can prove fatal as the body simply keeps bleeding afterwards. However, there are levels to hemophilia. In some people it simply reduces the amount of clotting protein which a person produces, but people are still able to heal from wounds, albeit in a reduced capacity. However, for others the ability to produce this clotting protein is very badly compromised and such individuals are extremely vulnerable. Today, hemophilia can be treated by artificially adding the missing blood clotting factor to an individual's system. However, in the late 19th and early 20th century, there was no treatment of any effective kind other than to try and avoid injury. 
This would make it fatal for many of Europe's royals. The roots of the royal disease, as it became known, have generally been traced back to Queen Victoria of Britain. Victoria was one of Britain's foremost monarchs. She ascended to the throne in 1837 when she was just 18 years of age and reigned for 63 and a half years down to her death in 1901 at the age of 81. Because this was a period when Britain's empire reached its height and owing to the length of her reign, Victoria's name has been applied to much of the 19th century, the Victorian age. Victoria was a silent carrier of hemophilia, a disease which had only been first identified in the late 18th century and which was very poorly understood by the time she ascended the throne in 1837. As such, she did not actively suffer from the disease, but could pass it on to her offspring. It is possible that Victoria's own mother, Princess Victoria of the House of saxe coburg saalfeld was also a carrier and the disease may have actually originated with her rather than her royal daughter. In any event, it was Victoria who would first pass on an active version of the disease which manifested as severe hemophilia. The damage wrought by Victoria's hemophilia might have been relatively contained had it not been for the marriage politics of the 19th century. Victoria had nine children, all of whom lived into adulthood. And because she was the monarch of the most powerful nation in the world at that time, there were no shortage of suitors from amongst Europe's other royal houses to marry Victoria's children. Victoria's eldest child, named Victoria after her mother, married Prince Frederick of Prussia, who would later briefly become German Emperor in 1888. They had a son, Wilhelm, who became emperor himself in 1888 and ruled the country for 30 years. Thus, the hemophilia which Victoria carried was passed along to the German royal family. A similar pattern occurred with Victoria's other children. From amongst her offspring, Princess Alice and Princess Beatrice were two particularly virulent carriers of the disease. Alice married Louis IV, Grand Duke of Hesse and by Rhine, and Princess Beatrice married Prince Henry of the House of Battenberg in Germany. Some of their children actively suffered from the disease, while others passed the disease on to some of Victoria's great-grandchildren. For instance, Princess Beatrice's eldest daughter was Victoria Eugenie, who subsequently married Alfonso XIII of Spain. She was the mother of Infante Gonzalo and Prince Alfonso, who as we saw died in Austria and Miami respectively in 1934 and 1938. One of Princess Alice's daughters, Alexandra, who was born in 1872, married Tsar Nicholas II in 1894. She was a carrier of hemophilia, although like her grandmother and mother did not actively suffer any symptoms. However, she did pass it on to her only son, Alexei, who was born in 1904 and became the heir to the Russian Empire. As we will see shortly, Alexei suffered badly from the disease and his condition even played a major part in Russian politics in the 1910s. It was not simply the case that the royal disease was being passed through the royal lines of Europe. It was also leading to deaths, primarily amongst male descendants of Queen Victoria. The first victim was one of Princess Alice's children, her second son, Prince Friedrich of Hesse and by Rhine. He was born in 1870 and died in May 1873 before his third birthday and just weeks after he had been diagnosed with the disorder. This was not the first that Victoria's extended family had learned of the disease. Her youngest son, Prince Leopold, Duke of Albany, who was born in 1853, had been diagnosed with hemophilia when he was still in his childhood. 
Leopold managed to live well into his adult years, but on the 27th of March, 1884, when he was 30 years old, he fell in his holiday home in the French seaside town of Cannes, hitting his knee and banging his head. Again, the injury was minor, but it was enough to cause a cerebral hemorrhage, which killed Leopold the following morning. Further deaths followed. For instance, Prince Henry of Prussia, a great-grandson of Victoria and the grandson of Princess Alice, died in 1904 at four years of age, owing to a minor fall. In total, between 1873 and 1945, at least nine senior members of Europe's royal lines and aristocratic families would die from the condition, including Infante Gonzalo and Prince Alfonso of Spain. All nine were male, including Victoria's son, Leopold. The other eight consisted of two of her grandsons and six of her great-grandsons. Perhaps the most famous example of hemophilia amongst Queen Victoria's descendants is the Tsarevich or heir of the Russian Empire, Alexei Nikolaevich. Alexei was born in 1904 as the youngest child and only son of Tsar Nicholas II and his wife, Empress Alexandra Fyodorovna, the daughter of Princess Alice. This made Alexei Victoria's great-grandson. He was ill from birth. When the umbilical cord was cut, he continued to bleed for hours and Alexei lost roughly one-eighth of his blood. By the time he was born, Europe's royals were well aware of the disease which had been passed throughout Europe's ruling dynasties and senior aristocratic lines, and so his parents knew from the first days of his life that he was an active carrier of the royal disease. Because he was the only male heir of Nicholas, Alexei lived a highly protected life thereafter, being guarded around the clock throughout his childhood to ensure he did not injure himself. However, Alexei had a severe version of the disease. When he was three years old, he fell while playing in Alexander Park and ended up with severe bruising and swelling from what was a relatively minor injury. Eventually, Alexei's illness would have a huge bearing on Russia's politics. From 1906 onwards, his mother Alexandra began placing much faith in Grigory Rasputin, a self-proclaimed mystic and faith healer from Siberia, who she believed could help heal Alexei. Over the next 10 years, Rasputin became increasingly powerful at the Russian court, but his presence was extremely divisive, and he became a major subject of criticism amongst the Russian people. In the end, Rasputin's rise was one of the major causes of the discontent which led to the Russian Revolution and Nicholas II's overthrow early in 1917. As a consequence, Alexei, as with all the other members of his family, did not die in the end from his hemophilia, but was murdered by the new Bolshevik Soviet government in 1918. In this instance, the royal disease had had a significant impact on the history and politics of a major European nation. Gonzalo and Alfonso of Spain died as the terrible path which Hemophilia had paved through Europe's royal families was coming to an end. The last descendants of Queen Victoria who were known to carry the gene died in the 1940s. The last member of the extended family was Prince Waldemar of Prussia, a great-grandson of the British monarch. He was 56 years of age and had survived as long as he did owing to regular blood transfusions. In the chaos of 1945, as the Allies overran Germany at the end of the Second World War, vital medical services were unavailable and the prince died at Tutzing in Bavaria on May 2, 1945, six days before the end of the war in Europe. Because all of Victoria's descendants who carried the gene had died by the middle of the 20th century, it was not possible for many years to identify exactly what type of hemophilia the extended family suffered from. 
But in 2009, examinations of the remains of the Romanovs who were assassinated in Russia in 1918 revealed that the royal disease was actually Hemophilia B, a strand of the disease which manifests primarily in men, of which women are typically silent carriers, exhibiting only mild symptoms. Thus, over a century after Victoria's death. The cause of the death of so many of Europe's royals in the late 19th and early 20th century was fully revealed.